We are going to design the following frame using RISET 3D. We will select this member sizes for preliminary design and then we'll conduct a um, design by optimizing the members. To do this, we're going to follow these steps. We're going to set global parameters, particularly the codes. Uh, units will be consistent. We'll modify the drawing grid. We'll create the members. Uh, we'll set appropriate boundary conditions. We'll input the loads, load combinations, conduct the solution, view the results, and optimize the design. So the first thing we need to do is go to global parameters and um, change the code. We want to use the 14th edition of AISC LIFD code. Uh, we will not adjust stiffness for this problem. Uh, that will be later in the semester. And so we apply those, and then we go on to modify the grid. The grid, we have a span of 20 feet, so we're going to use two spaces at 10 feet. That will become obvious when we create the model. Uh, we have first floor 15 feet and the second floor 12 feet, so that will give us nine spaces at three feet. And so we end up with a grid that looks like that. Uh, to create the members, we're going to go to this tool, pencil tool. We're selecting the columns first. Uh, we need a W14 by 90, it's a preliminary section. And so once we select that, next thing is we need to make sure that this type is set to column. Design list is a white blanche material. We're going to use A992. And so we can then create our columns. There's first one and the second column. Next, we create our beams. And for beams, we have decided to choose a W10 by 77 as a preliminary section. So we can select that from this list. Now we have to ch change the type to beam. Everything else remains the same. And we can create those beams. And there's two beams. But we're going to use two elements so that we can connect the bracing to this node 7 and 8. Uh, also, the ends of these beams are released because they're simply supported. So there's the first one. The circle in the case of the moment has been released. Do this for the second one. And then the other two as well. Next, we create our diagonal members. So for that, we're going to actually use the tubes. <clears throat> and we need the HSS uh, 6 by 3 by 4. We'll select that as a preliminary section. This 4 indicates a fraction. Uh, so it's not 4 inches. It's actually a half an inch. And then on the beam, we'll use V-brace. On the design list, we're going to use a tube section. And instead of the uh, material being A992, we're going to actually use A36. And so then we can go ahead and create. Oh, we actually want to go back and release the ends uh, in this model so that we don't have to do them manually. And you can see the circles indicate that moment has been released. Next thing we do supports, the reactions are fixed. In order to keep this from uh, moving out of a two-dimensional plane or developing reactions in the, uh, out of the plane, we will fix any translation or rotation out of the plane, 2D plane. So we do that. Now we also have to do that for the other seven, uh, six joints, but they are free to translate and rotate. So we will not pick up the reactions for those because there aren't any. And so now we um, create some basic load cases. We're going to have dead load. We're going to have uh, roof life. We're going to have floor live load. We're going to have wind and earthquake. 
So we're going to select category dead load for the first. We have a distributed and concentrated load that is uh, part of the roof live load. Then we have some floor live load. We have wind and also earthquake loading. Next, we apply those to the model. So select the dead load first, Y direction. On the roof, we have negative 0.5. Apply to the two beam sections. For the floor, we have one. So we apply that to the floor. Next, we do the roof life. And for the roof life, we have the distribute load that's at one kip per foot. And so we'll do that. And we also have a concentrated load that is negative 10 at 50% of the span of the first. You got to go back because we are actually using the roof live load in this case. And so there's my roof live load. We have to also do floor live load, and that's two kips per foot. We also do the wind using the distributed load, but now instead of the y-axis, we're going to use the x-axis. But the first portion of the column is 0.3. The um, half, first half of the second column is going to be 0.7. And so we go from 0 to 50%. And then we go for the last portion is one point. Two, and it'll be from 50% up to 100%. And so now that we have all the loading, we need to create load combination. Actually, we do not. We have to create uh, one more loading. That is the earthquake loading. And the earthquake loading, uh, we're going to have X it's negative two kips at the first top of the first floor. Uh, it's actually positive. It wouldn't make any difference, so but we're going to make it positive to be consistent with the sketch that we had. And then the top is going to be five kips. So we can check. There's uh oh. Our wind didn't quite well. We put that on there. So we have to delete our wind load and move it from live load to wind. Uh, so I simply went back, deleted the uh, wind load in the live load, uh, floor live load, and I moved it to the wind load basic load case. Uh, now we create load combinations. In order to do this, we'll use the load case generator. The load case generator will give us three different choices, gravity, wind, and seismic. We'll start with the gravity loading. Uh, we're going to use the strength, but rather than the 2012, we'll use the 2010 ASE 7 strength load combinations. We do not need snow load or rain load. We don't have any. And so this will give us the first four load combinations. Next, we're going to do wind. Uh, for wind, we're going to use strength again. We're going to keep it to 2D. And we're going to do reversible uh, loading. So that means it can act in two, two directions. Um, and so we'll generate uh, another set of load combinations. And finally, with the seismic, we'll select the same 2010 ASC 7 strength. And here we'll do 2D reversible, no redundancy or vertical component of the earthquake load. And so we generate that, and that'll give us about 18 load combinations. Now that we have the load combinations, we can solve the problem by clicking on the equal sign, and we're going to do the envelope solution. This will give us the following results for the moment diagram. So we'll go to member moment and there's our moment diagram uh, we can also change the label of the members to the shape 
And that tells us which shapes we have. Um, other item we can do here is design this or optimize the sections by going to suggested design. Notice um, the sections, preliminary sections are quite big and RISA is um, giving us some suggested shapes. We can right click inside this box and solve again using the suggested shapes. There are members, we only care about the member solution so we'll do that, don't have any walls. And we end up with um, four new cases and we can do this again until there's one more case uh, and so at this point what we could do is um, we suggest the shapes a little bigger 10 by 17 we run it again now there are no um, optimization to be done. So now this is the optimal. Obviously, uh, we probably would want to use the same size for the entire length of this column and that column as well. And clearly the beams would probably want to be, we want them to be the same size. Uh, but that's an optimization procedure in RISA.